What's going on, everybody? Good late afternoon or early evening for some of you. And uh, I want to go over some things that were recently said by the people who are currently running this team. Uh, as most of you know, there were league meetings uh, earlier this week, just a couple of days ago. The uh, yearly annual league meetings took place where the owners and a lot of the coaches and a lot of the movers and shakers in the NFL get together and discuss things, and we I may make another video down the line about some of the things that manifested from the league meetings this year, because they're definitely interesting, and a lot of people have thoughts on them, but um, I want to talk specifically about some of the things that were said by the people who are in control of this Seahawks team, uh, Schneider and McDonald particularly, because both of them had some things to say when they were encountered at the uh, league league meetings. So, first, we have some injury updates, and nothing shocking was said. In fact, I think that the things that John Schneider said concerning injuries were all within the realm of expectations, and I didn't expect to hear anything else. And that honestly also goes for what um, <clears throat> was said about some other things as well. So, nothing in this little news dump was, like, earth-shattering. Nevertheless... Um, taking a look at what he said, just to go over it, he gave positive um, updates on the health of Abraham Lucas and Uchenna Nwosu. He said they are both on track to be ready for the start of the season. And at this point, uh, as it comes to Abe Lucas, this is the best news you could hope for, right? Uh, with the way his rehab has been, with the way this injury situation has been playing out over the last, um, over the last uh, several months... Him being on track to be ready to start the season is about the best you can hope for. They're not going to say, oh, he's 100% perfect now. That's probably never going to happen. But him being on track to be ready to start the season is about as good as it's going to get. And Uchenna Nwosu being on track, that was... I, I remember when he got hurt, there was a reported possibility that he might be back in time for the uh, playoffs if we made it. So, of course, I would expect him to be ready for the start of the season nine months later. So Uchenna Nwosu looks like he'll be good to go, which I never thought that this was going to be a long-term lingering injury that would go into uh, games that were over 10 months after the injury was suffered. Uh, the one not-so-positive update was uh, Jarek Reed. He did say that Reed's rehab has gone well, but he did say he's not sure if he'll be ready for the season opener, which I don't expect him to be. He tore his ACL fairly deep into the season, I would expect Jarek Reed to miss at least part of the 2023 season, personally. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 2024 season, personally. And, um, obviously, I don't have a problem with that. We should be able to survive without him, and we should be planning for a 2024 season without him. All right, so, there was that. And we also said, and we also got, I would say, probably the firmest backing of Geno Smith we've gotten since this offseason started because we've documented on this channel a little bit how despite their actions being very pro Geno, their words have been very um, muddled. And this comment from Schneider and McDonald yesterday at the league meetings was about the best we've heard from them so far. They made it clear, both of them, that Geno Smith is their QB1. And Schneider did say he believes in Howell, which of course he does believe in Howell, or else he wouldn't have traded for him. But the interesting thing here is that they finally seem to commit to Geno Smith as QB1. So if there was any thought that anybody had about some other scenario playing out, it's, it's just not happening right now. So it was interesting because their actions clearly indicated that this was the case, right? Their actions very clearly indicated that they believed in Geno and that they were investing in Geno and that Geno was going to be their guy for 2024, but they had always been very, uh, kind of very opaque with their words. So I think a lot of people read into that heavily and thought that maybe there was something that was going to happen here. Maybe he would get traded previously. Maybe he would get cut. Maybe he would get benched. But, uh, finally we got something firm from the people in charge. And at this point, I think that's good. 
I totally understand the desire to have players competing against each other, and I understand the desire to have players um, know that their job is potentially on the line at all times if they don't perform. But at this point, there's clearly not a better option, and pursuing an option that has a tiny chance of being better would be very expensive. So this is clearly the right thing to do. So that's good, I guess. I mean, at this point, I don't see how anybody could be unhappy with this because it's too late to do anything else, pretty much. And um, the one other thing that I want to draw attention to here, because this was something that people kind of got, uh, this was something that kind of disturbed some people, and it feeds into some of the things that Schneider has already said this offseason. Um, Schneider and McDonald both said the team has work to do on the offensive line which that's good, right? Clearly they need to do that. But then he talked up Tremaine Ankrum and McClendon Curtis as potential legitimate options. And that got some people kind of upset. That got some people kind of concerned. Um, guys, I, I, I think that now is the time to be as positive as possible, especially with a guy you just signed and haven't seen in your building yet, right? Like, I don't know. I look at this and I go, okay, Tremaine Ankrum has starter upside at guard. Clearly, that's not true. I, I think it's very clear that that's not true. I don't think Tremaine Ankrum has, he barely has backup upside at guard. And if we go into the season with Tremaine Ankrum starting on our offensive line, believe me, I'm going to be very, very concerned about it. And I'm going to wonder if this is the thing that derails our season. Same with a guy like McClendon Curtis. is If he's even on the 53-man roster... I'm going to be sitting there thinking, well, either hopefully he improved massively since last time we saw him, or he, um, I don't know, changed, or his real name is like Connor Williams and he just changed his name to McClendon Curtis in the offseason, or, or I'm going to believe that John Schneider just is losing his mind a little bit, thinking that a guy like McClendon Curtis is a legitimate NFL player. He's just not. He's a practice squad level player. But... It, it kind of makes me think of, and I want to point to what you see Jim Harbaugh doing right now when it comes to J.J. McCarthy, talking about how great he thinks J.J. McCarthy is. And the things that he's saying, I, I don't know if you guys have been familiar with it, but go look it up. He's called J.J. McCarthy clearly the best player in this draft. He's indicated that he thinks he should go number one. He's indicated that he knows he's going to be the first quarterback off the board. He's indicated that he had the best workout he's ever seen. And it's obviously not true. He's obviously making it up. He's obviously lying. But he's talking up a guy that is not on his current team, but is on his previous team. But he feels this desire and this need to talk about how great he thinks he is. And this is something that Jim Harbaugh did a lot when he was in San Fran. He would talk about how great he thought his players were. He would protect his players, defend his players, talk about, you know, use extreme hyperbole extreme hyperbole to stick up for his players when he was at San Fran and he's doing the same thing here in Michigan. Like I remember him talking about the interception that Colin Kaepernick threw in the NFC title game against the Seahawks. And he said, oh, I, I thought it was a great throw. It just needed to be like half an inch higher and it would have been a touchdown, which is very obviously not even close to being true. But that's that's the way he goes about things. He speaks overly positively about everything to do with his team I look at a quote like this, talking up Tremaine Ankrum, who we just signed a couple weeks ago, and McClendon Curtis, a very low-level player on this roster, and I see the same level of meaning and depth, which is to say, not at all. So, no, I don't look at a quote like this and get worried that, oh, we're not going to make investments on the offensive line because we have these guys. So, I just wanted to go ahead and touch on that because I, I see people kind of overreacting to the smoke. There's a lot of smoke right now. There is a lot of smoke right now when it comes to this draft stuff, when it comes to team building stuff, and there should be, and it makes a lot of sense why there is. And as fans, we uh, we just need to do everything we can to not fall for it. We just need to understand that there's a reason why people are being deceptive right now. So I I look at a quote like this and I just go, yeah, that's just a general manager who has personnel control exaggerating and fabricating positive things to say about the players that he has brought in, that he's had a role in bringing in, that he's had a role in being part of this team for some time in the case of McClendon Curtis. 
that doesn't mean they're going to pass up on opportunities to improve dramatically when the draft comes around. So I I don't look at this and think that Schneider's um, maybe biting in a little bit too hard on the on his own hype. I think that he's putting hype out there to try to disguise what they're doing because the unfortunate reality, and this is something that we did do to ourselves, we have put ourselves in a situation where it is very obvious what we need to do in the draft. And as I've already gone over, I don't think we have the money to do it any other way. So it's going to have to be the draft. We need left guards. We need interior offensive linemen in the worst way. We don't have very much in the entire interior. We need to draft that, and everybody knows it. Um, the goal of this offseason was to fill our needs at as many positions as possible so that we wouldn't have a situation like that going into the draft where it would be obvious what we were trying to do. And we did most of it. We did a lot of great work there, but we did leave that guard spot open. So I look at a quote like this, and I think he's trying to cast doubt on that notion so that it's not so obvious that we need interior offensive line help in the draft, even though in all likelihood we probably obviously still do, but we don't lose anything by trying to BS about it. But uh, yeah, those were the main takeaways from Schneider and McDonald at the league meetings this year. Geno Smith is QB1. John Schneider spews some nonsense about how our barely NFL caliber guards are good. And Lucas and Nwosu are on track to be start ready for the start of the season. And Jarek Reed, maybe not. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. More videos coming tomorrow. We'll be on Twitch tonight doing probably more Rebirth. See you guys there, hopefully. And uh, yeah. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below.